Hello, and we thank you so much for watching as we continue our study in the book of Revelation. This week, as we come to the church in Philadelphia, God gives a powerful message, but it's one of hope. It is one to continue in the ways that they're doing. You see, in all of the other messages, God is giving reproof. He is giving correction. He is giving them things that they need to repent in order to stand right before him. But to this church, he says, you need to continue in the ways you're doing. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it encouraging? Isn't it hope giving? When we think about a message from God and he says, continue in the paths that you're going. Isn't it wonderful to think about how our God is a God of encouragement and he sees things with true eyes and as he sees this church, he says, you are doing very well. Christians, I hope there are times in our lives where when we look at who we are and what we're doing, we don't see ourselves as sinless, but we recognize that there are times when we get it right. And I hope that we're excited about that and I hope we rejoice when we see that we are the people God wants us to be in our lives. As we begin, let's look in Revelation 3 and pick up in verse 7. It says, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write the words of the Holy One, the true one, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one opens. Here Jesus is described in a very unique way. He is called the Holy One and the True One. And how many times is that the view of God that we see? We think about our Heavenly Father as one who is holy. We remember the book of Isaiah. It says that holy, holy, holy is the God of hosts. And we think about that song that we sing. Holy, holy, holy. What a beautiful thought that our God is perfect. But here Jesus is called not only the Holy One, but he's also called the True One. You see, Philadelphia was home to so many temples for pagan gods. In fact, many people in the ancient world called this Little Athens because Athens was sprawled throughout with temples. And in many ways, Philadelphia was the same way. It was the home to so many pagan rituals and pagan temples and Jesus here introduces himself as the true one. You see, he doesn't want people to confuse him with one of the false gods who's taken up residence in Philadelphia. He says, I am the true one. But more than that, we look at what Revelation chapter 6 says as we continue to look at what that looks like. And in verse 9, this is what it says about Jesus our Lord. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the witness they had borne. They cried out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then they were given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete who were to be killed as they themselves had been. Here Jesus is given to us as the holy and true one. What a beautiful thing to think about our Lord as not only being holy and righteous, but he is also true in the sense that he is real. And here he offers real comfort, real hope for those who had been martyred in his name. But as we return to the message in Philadelphia, we see some very important things. Verse 7 is an opening, and then he begins to talk to them about the opportunity that they have in verse 8. He says, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no one is able to shut. I know that you have little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. What an incredible thought to see Jesus here talking to his church. And he says, I know your works. And he says that to most all of them. And while he normally gives a little praise and then a great rebuke here, he says, I know your works. And behold, I have set before you an open door. 
because this church had been faithful, God says there is an open door before them. There is a great opportunity that the Lord himself has placed in their reach. Sometimes I wonder what this open door was. What was the great opportunity that he gave to the church in Philadelphia? Many times we ought to ask ourselves the question, if we have been faithful, what open door has God placed before us that is open and cannot be shut? What opportunities, special opportunities, has God given his church today? What opportunities will he present before me and you in this new day? As we think about the great opportunity that God has given his people, we must also ask ourselves, what has God given me to do? And in this world, there is a great place and a great void that Christians need to fill. We need to be people who bring hope to our communities. We need to be people who bring the gospel to the lost. We need to be those who bring peace in a world of fear and animosity. We need to be people who provide to these opportunities. Folks, the world is hurting. The world is confused. The world is lost. The world is anxious. Right now, the world is in so much turmoil because we don't know what tomorrow will be like. We remember James' words and oh, how they echo so clearly and so unbelievably true today. That life is like a vapor. It's here today and it's gone tomorrow. Christians, God has called us to opportunity. Believers have a role in this world. Yes, it is to shine our little Christian light, but it also is to fill the place that God has opened to us. What special opportunity is open before me and you? Jesus says, I gave you this because... You have been faithful. He says, I know that you have but little power, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. You know, it oftentimes seems that Christians are completely overwhelmed in this world. Maybe we don't have a lot of power. Maybe we don't have a lot of influence in our own minds. But Jesus says to this church, Though you have little power, I'm still working through you. I've still opened doors for you. And the thing that I hope that we gain from this verse is that we are not the ones who provide great opportunities for Christians. The Lord provides opportunities for us. And those who are faithful will respond faithfully to the open doors that God has opened before us. You see, the power is not in me and it's not in you as individual Christians and even as churches. The power is within the God that we serve. And when we rely on his power and his might, and we are his hands and his feet, and we bring his heart into the world, God will be glorified and the church will do what it should. We move forward to verse nine, and it says, Behold, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not but lie. Behold, I will make them come and bow down before your feet, and they will learn that I have loved you. Here he talks about the great opposition that is before them, and a couple times previously in the messages to the other churches, John has written about these people who are of the synagogue of Satan, or they are pretending to be Jews and are not. There are going to be false believers in this world. There are going to be people who try and win over the world for Satan, through any means necessary. And the message that we hear resoundingly clear in this book of Revelation is that God stands for true believers. God stands with those who are pure and whole and follow after him in his will. What a great challenge we have to see the way that God takes care of this. I love this quote from Warren Wiersbe. He writes, if we take care of God's work, he will take care of of our battles. What a beautiful promise God has given to these people in the city of Philadelphia to take care of them and to watch over them and protect them because they have consumed themselves with doing God's work and being God's people. You see, it's not about us and us protecting ourselves and us 
watching out for our own welfare. In many ways, we rely on God and we must rely on our Father in heaven if we want to do his will. But God opens doors for these people and he says, I am fighting against those who are coming against you. We go to verse 10 and here he says, because you have kept my word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of tribulation or trial that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast to what you have so that no one may seize your crown. God tells them that they will be spared. What a beautiful privilege these people will have to be spared by God and not be put through so many of the trials that other Christians, other people in the world would have to endure during this time. But he says it's because they've been patiently enduring. You and me in our lives, do we patiently endure for the Lord? Do we patiently wait for him? Do we patiently endure knowing that God takes care of things that are outside of our control and are bigger than we can handle? Do we do a good job of keeping our faith in the Lord when things are not ideal, when things are not opportune, when things are not easy? These Christians did, and so God says you will be spared and you will be blessed in a way that others will not. But we go to verse 12. The one who conquers, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall never go out of it, and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from my God out of heaven and my own new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Here God gives a resounding message of hope for those who conquer for those who continue doing the right things, I will give him my name. I will write on him my name, my son's new name, speaking the name of Jesus, and the new name of the city, the new Jerusalem. But one of the beautiful things he says prior to that is that he will make him a pillar in the temple of God. Historically, one of the things that plagued the city of Philadelphia were mighty earthquakes. And if you've ever seen pictures recently of what earthquakes can do, you see their devastation. You see how much problem they can bring to a society. And so the fact that he says, I will make him a pillar in the temple of God, maybe he's giving reference to something that all of these people see when there is a lack of stability. He'll be a pillar, a strong place, a stabilizer. But more than that, he says, in this temple, he will never go out. And God reminds them of the beauty and the promise of eternity with him. Christians, I hope that we can't wait to be with Jesus. Yes, this earth, it, it does have its good things. Yes, there are good things that we enjoy in this life. But I hope that more than anything this world has to offer, we look forward to being with our Lord. On that day, everything will be made right. And on that day, you and I will be at peace in heaven with Jesus and our Heavenly Father forever. In a place that the book of Revelation says there will be no tears, no sadness, no hardship. All of those things have passed away. The message that we gain from the church in Philadelphia is to continue. It is the message to continue in the right ways. And if you're at peace with God right now and you find yourself doing God's will in your life, I hope that you will continue in those ways. The message that God gives to his people here is to do what is right and keep doing what is right because there is an opportunity by God before them. What are the opportunities that we have before us? Are there doors that God has opened for his people to fill who is faithful to him? I think that when we look for opportunities, we find them plentifully. God is good to us. He has been good to his church, and God will continue to be good to those who are faithful to him. Will we fill those opportunities that our Lord brings to us? Will we faithfully answer his call to go into all the world? Will we answer the call to do good to one another? Will we answer the call to love people in our communities? regardless of who they are, 
or how they treat us. Doors are open before us. What will we do? And again, thank you for watching. I hope that God blesses you in the days to come.